Hi, everybody. This is Peter Schiff. It's Tuesday, uh, May 26, 2009. First of all, I just wanted to quickly announce that I will not be appearing on Glenn Beck. Today I had mentioned that I'd be on, uh, on an earlier blog. Uh, what happened is uh, the president came out today and you know announced his nominee for Supreme Court. And, of course, that bumped me off uh, Glenn Beck. But they did reschedule me till Thursday. So I will be on this Thursday on the Glenn Beck Show. You know, the last time this happened, I was scheduled to be on Good Morning America on ABC, and then uh, Barack Obama happened to announce the breed of the dog that he was buying, and that was such a huge story that ABC decided to cover that completely for an hour and trash the footage they had of me uh, talking about the economy. So every time the president seems to make an announcement, somehow I get booted, uh, but that's how it works in, uh, in, in television news. Um, but also, I mentioned last time on the blog that I would be on The Daily Show, and I didn't have a date with Jon Stewart. The date for The Daily Show is June 9th. So June 9th for Jon Stewart on The Daily Show. Hopefully nothing happens to get me bumped off of that show. And it's interesting. I am you know, kind of picking up a little bit more media right now. Coincidentally, as Time Magazine just came out with a piece, basically wondering why I'm being shut out of the media. Uh, commenting on the fact that my media bookings and appearances are down substantially since my economic predictions came to pass, and he's pondering, you know, why this is. And the actual uh, print issue is not out yet. It's on the Internet right now, but it should be out on the newsstands within a week. I noticed today on the Wall Street Journal, uh, there's a blog on the Wall Street Journal uh, questioning the article, is it true, is it not true, is he getting shut out, what do you think? I mean, personally, I mean, I'm certainly not on as much as I was. I'm not doing Fox as much as I was. I'm not doing CNN as much as I was. I'm not doing CNBC as much as I was. I'm not even doing Bloomberg. I'm barely doing Bloomberg. Uh, so most of the media coverage I have noticed has come down a lot. I'm not get, I, don't, I don't get called as often by reporters. I mean, if you just go into the website, the Europac website, and look at the section that says Peter Schiff in the news, where you look at when reporters have quoted me, I usually get quoted a lot more frequently. I'm still available to the media. I take their calls. And if you look at in the archives of my video appearances, if you look at the television appearances, you'll see that I'm not on nearly as often. I mean, I'm still on. But the, the, the reality is, you know, given how accurate a lot of my calls were and given what's happened, you would think the media would want me on more, not on less. And that's, you know, the point of the, the article. Now, I want to talk a little bit um, about, the, you know, the Supreme Court uh, appointment, and I haven't really looked into uh, this individual's background too heavily. I know that she's being promoted in the media and by President Obama as being a liberal judge, an activist judge, a judge who cares, a judge who is empathetic. And to me, what all that means is she's a judge or a justice uh, who is going to completely ignore the Constitution and instead rule based on her feelings, based on her agenda whether it's a social agenda or an economic agenda. And that's exactly what we don't want on the Supreme Court. We want justices who enforce the Constitution and protect and defend the Constitution regardless of how it impacts people who are needy or people who we think are desirable of winning a judgment. Or we can't let it, even, even if a ruling interferes with what we believe is the right thing to do socially or economically, if it conflicts with the Constitution, the Constitution has to win. You know, we're a nation of laws, not a nation of men. But the way it is now, what Obama wants and what all the presidents want is they want us to be a nation of men. And they want to be in charge of the men who sit on the Supreme Court, or in this case, the women. And they want them to disregard the Constitution in the name of interpreting it. And this whole nonsense that the Constitution needs to be interpreted is a joke. I mean, the Constitution isn't written in Chinese. It doesn't need to be interpreted. It needs to be enforced. When politicians talk about interpreting the Constitution, they're talking about ignoring the Constitution because it conflicts with their agenda. You see, the reality is, if we followed the Constitution, if we followed our founding fathers, the government couldn't do any of the things that it's doing. We'd still have a tiny federal government, and we'd be a far more prosperous nation. If we listen to the Constitution, if we follow by the Constitution, the government would be very small. They would do very little. We'd have a much more vibrant economy. We'd be on sound money. We'd have to be on the gold standard. We wouldn't have an income tax. We wouldn't have Social Security taxes. Uh, we would have the type of country 
that our founders envisioned. But the problem is modern day politicians don't want anything to do with the concepts that the framers of our Constitution envisioned. Uh, the, and so the Constitution is a roadblock to everything they want to do. The way, they found, the, the way around this roadblock is to pretend that it's a living, breathing document and that it changes with the times and that the Constitution means whatever we want it to mean, which unfortunately has been the case. If we had simply followed the Constitution, we wouldn't be in this mess that we're in today. Uh, you know, it's interesting, too. I, I read a, an article somebody sent me from Bloomberg where the Federal Reserve has been buying tips. I mean, imagine the irony there. When they first created these Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, TIPS, did anybody think that the Federal Reserve would be printing money to buy the TIPS? I mean, first of all, why does the Fed need protection from itself? I mean, the Fed creates the inflation. Why does it need the protection? And, of course, the ultimate irony is as they print money to buy TIPS, they create the very inflation that is causing people to want to prefer TIPS over Treasuries. The whole thing is the theater of of the absurd. I mean, they, they, they shouldn't be buying them at all because they shouldn't be creating the inflation. And of course, theoretically, the last thing we want is for the Fed to think they're protected from inflation because then they'll create even more of it, which is exactly what they're going to do anyway. But I guess the, the whole irony of this seemed to be lost on the journalist, or he didn't bother to pick it up. I've tried to contact him to see if he can do a follow-up story uh, on the absurdity of the Fred, the Fed buying tips. And, and, and what you would all think about, what we should think about it. And, of course, I've never been a fan of tips. I've always encouraged my clients, if they want inflation, inflation protection, not to buy tips. I said that's ultimately like hiring the fox to guard your hen house because tips are indexed to the CPI. And, of course, the CPI is a joke. The government has rendered it meaningless with hedonics, with geometric pricing, uh, you know, with all sorts of gimmicks, with substitutions. So if you really want inflation protection, you buy gold, you invest abroad, you buy foreign assets, you don't buy tips. So even though I believe there's a lot of inflation, I believe the government lies about it, which means I don't want to buy their phony protection. I want to buy real uh, inflation protection. Uh, so I, you know, we invest abroad or we buy, uh, we buy, we buy gold bullion. In fact, you know, I was on um, a television again today on, on Fox Business. Uh, talking about you know gold, will gold break through a thousand? When will it break through a thousand? Because it's getting very close. It's about nine hundred and fifty now. And I pointed out on the air that it took the Dow Jones a long time before it finally broke through a thousand. That was a huge barrier in the nineteen sixties and nineteen seventies. And when it broke through it, it never looked back. And of course, the Dow went up to fourteen thousand. I think we're going to see something similar with gold. I think once gold really breaks through uh, a thousand. I think that it's a new psychological barrier, and I think it's headed much, much higher. So I think people, if they really want inflation protection, don't do what the Fed is doing and buy tips, buy real inflation protection, buy real money, and get out of the fiat currency uh, that the Fed is creating in, in, in favor of the type of currency that our founders uh, had in mind for us when they actually wrote the Constitution. And if presidents like Barack Obama could actually you know, nominate and Congress could actually approve Supreme Court justices that actually understood the Constitution, as I said, we would still be on a gold standard and we wouldn't need inflation protection because we wouldn't have any inflation. The only need, reason we need to protect ourselves from inflation is because the, the judges on the bench are not enforcing the Constitution and making sure that Americans have the type of money that our founding fathers desired. Anyway, that's it for today. You know, make sure to keep on. If you check my website, you know, I've already updated the fact that my Glenn Beck appearance uh, is moving from Tuesday uh, to Thursday. And if you don't know, I put my upcoming TV appearances on my website as I, as I hear about them. So if you, if you check that and monitor that, you'll know what's going on. I'm also going to be putting up uh, uh, the Daily Show appearance uh, as well on there. And so, you know, try to... Uh, uh, you know, tell people about this or move this around the internet. It should be a very, very interesting uh, interview with John Stewart. He's a funny guy. I don't know. Maybe I'll be able to get in a few laughs myself. But it was very interesting uh, at the way he jumped all over some of the other commentators on the financial channels uh, who totally got it wrong. I wonder how he'll respond to me, especially considering that from a political point of view, uh, we are you know very opposite of one another. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll be back again soon. So long.